Hey guys, what's happening? Miller Gamer recently asked me in the Q&A video, why do you nitpick? Now this is something that I get asked a ton. Now typically this somehow comes out in the form of, you fag, why did you hate on my favorite game? Why don't you just play games to have fun? Why are you complaining so much? If you don't like the game, why don't you play something else? This is some of the worst comments that I get, but I will talk about all of it right here, right now. Why do I nitpick so much? Well, really, when I do a review, it is in order to review the game. This is not me necessarily complaining because I have nothing better to do or because I am frustrated and YouTube is the only potential audience I have for venting those frustrations. No, typically that is... The first person who takes that brunt when I have a real personal matter to vent about is one of my friends, unfortunately for them. No, when I go to YouTube to critically analyze something such as a video game, it is not only for the entertainment value, because that is something that I'm striving to be, is a person that's entertaining. You can judge for yourself whether or not that is true. In addition to that, I am trying to review the games that I review because I find that enjoyable. Why do I find that enjoyable? Well, it probably has something to do with the fact that I love media. I love creating media. I love participating in media. I love watching media. It is one of my major hobbies and interests. And so reviews are meant to review games. When you review a game, not only do you talk about the pros, not only do you want to emphasize what it is that really set you off in enjoying a video game, but you also want to talk about the things that make the game tick, and that involves the reasons why you did not enjoy certain parts of the game, or why certain parts of the game frustrated you. Now, oftentimes, a game like an 8 or a 9, oftentimes, if you are just a casual player, you'll just enjoy the game, and you a lot of people just do not deep down think about what are the negatives of this video game. And if someone was to tell them, oh, this game is great, except for that camera angle in this certain part. Or, you know, this one stage was rather boring. A lot of people, I guess, just aren't used to hearing that. They're not used to critical analysis of things that they like. One thing that I feel is very shocking to a vocal minority, I guess, on YouTube, is that even if I am critically tearing something apart, I still might just enjoy it. A lot of the things that I enjoy have parts that I feel are negative, and I could talk until the end of time about those negative qualities of whatever I like if I really wanted to. When I look at a video game, I talk about the things that are good, the things that are bad, and then I talk about why specifically I felt the emotions that I did that caused me to like or dislike the game. End of story. If you want a review that you can just sit back and get high to and eat some Taco Bell and get fat and not think about the problems in the world, go listen to the classic game room. I hear that that channel's good for that kind of stuff. But if you want a nitpicking, not really nitpicking, what I am doing is just breaking down what it is that makes something tick. Perhaps the people who are into that sort of stuff, the people who are into hearing a detailed analysis on why things are the way that they are, are in the minority. However, that's who my target audience is. It's those people who are interested in this kind of discussion. And I want to emphasize the fact that just because I feel this way does not necessarily mean that you need to feel that way. And I always love it when I'm getting comments on my videos telling me, you know what, I actually kind of disagree with you respectfully. Now here is what it is that I disagree with and why I disagree with that. And if someone does a video response, even better, I am overjoyed to have conversation. Because that's kind of what I'm trying to do here. I try to... Well, in addition to giving a backstory to a video game, and I like to talk about its relevance, I like to uh, sort of parlay my feelings in a way that I would tell a friend about a video game if I were in a game store. Now, of course, I use a bit higher language than casual talk in a game store, and I try not to fall back on using too many swear words and all of that, but I try to get across that same meaning. Hey, dude, this is what I'm into. Hey, this is some 
high points of the game. These are some negative points in the game. And just like in that conversation that I'm having with a friend in a game store, I like to hear the feedback as well. If I'm with three people or two people or whatever, and one of them wants to tell me what they felt about that game while I'm telling the other person about a game, that's great. I love conversation about nerd topics, and I love hearing that kind of stuff. Now, in general, what I find interesting, though, is that nitpicking seems to have completely gone away. Judging has seemed to completely go away. I remember someone I used to date a while ago. It was just unforgivable if I ever talked about one of their friends and how I felt that how their friend is cheating on their boyfriend was a terrible thing. Now, I guess this is getting into a sticky subject because you're not supposed to talk about friends and on all of that. But what I found amusing is that this was just common knowledge amongst a group of people and they never talked about it or they never questioned it. It was all just sort of accepted. Oh, this person's cheating. This person really has no no real positive values, but whatever the end. Nitpicking, judging, stuff like that. When people are obviously doing things bad, we all just sort of hide under our desks and forget about it. It's something that's kind of just sort of shoved into our brains early on. Oh, you don't want to stick out. Oh, you don't want to be a person who judges. And that's about it. Just think about how sickening it is that people can get picked on so often in schools and no one says a damn thing. Every time that I have seen someone get picked on, even though there is typically only one or two quote-unquote bullies in one or two victims in every scenario there are always 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 like 20 at least onlookers who sit on their fucking ass and are complete pussies that do absolutely nothing about it as a senior in high school i was passing by this freshman lunch table and guess what they were getting picked on by a rival freshman lunch table and it was pretty fucking apparent there was nobody who was actually getting hit in order to you know send up a red flag to get the lunch ladies or whatever because they can only interpret things when someone actually gets hit and they have no senses otherwise but yeah it was just really freaking apparent that bad things were happening to this lesser lunch table in the lunchroom and there were just tons of people watching and no one said a goddamn fucking thing and these kids i kind of knew some of them i (laughs) i took a class as a senior that had a bunch of freshmen in it and i was talking to one of them i was like why do you deal with this crap what is what's the problem here and he's telling me like yeah in uh, gym class this one kid threatened my life now I don't know the level of severity of this but I guess it freaked him out a little bit and this is something that I am sure was heard by many other people and yet no one does a goddamn thing about it and the kid still gets harassed day after day stuff like that I have been picked on in parts of my life when I was in school And there have always been onlookers that did nothing about it. People that you think, oh, these are good people. These are, you know, positive people that are helping people out. Yet they still somehow sit on their ass and they never speak up. That is just something, I guess, that is drilled into human nature. And so when I get on YouTube and I start talking about video games, and I start critically analyzing things, if you are not coming from a background that is high in journalism where you're used to people breaking things apart, or if you're coming from a group of friends that just sort of talk about the daily gossip but never really talk about why it's bad when someone does something, or, hey, this you know, shifty situation occurred. Let's talk about why that happened. If you're not from one of those clusters of friends and you guys aren't really talking like that, if you're not used to that kind of stuff, I can really imagine how me nitpicking a video game can seem really off. It's like, who is this dude to actually step up and say things? Even though this is the internet and there's a level between you and I where you do not really communicate with me in a real-time basis and all of that still it is a little off-putting that oh this person is actually railing against something and he's actually talking about why he is feeling that way and so really i hope that 
people can eventually get used to this kind of stuff. Really, we're just talking about video games here and theoretical social situations occasionally. So I'm really not trying to ruin anyone's day or anything like that. Really, I just look for a conversation. Occasionally, I get serious about stuff, although still, I love to hear your guys' feedback. And really, I don't hate that many people. I try not to be that negative in my day-to-day -day life and all of that. A lot of this is just entertainment. So, hopefully you can appreciate that. Or if not, well, you're free not to watch the videos. But anyways, thanks for watching.